and welcome to another painting video. In this video, I'll be painting the Death Shroud, the mysterious and very dangerous personal guard of Mortarion. No one in the Legion knows their true identities, and with their huge man reapers, they are a force to be reckoned with. And they also look really cool. Let's paint them up, shall we? As always, I start with a black primed mini. I spray on Usapti Bone on pretty much the entire model. I spray from an angle so the deepest recesses remain black. With Vallejo Ivory, I spray on a second coat to make the armor look brighter. You can also use Screaming Skull for this. With Ulthan Grey, I spray the parts I want to pop, like the face or some cool gross features. Mind you, this can also be done with a normal brush, but I'm using the airbrush here for speed and efficiency. I now cover the entire model with streaking grime. I want my death guard to look filthy. With a Q-tip or cotton butt, I gently remove the streaking grime. First with a dry butt, but then also with some white spirit. This will remove the enamel wash, leaving it only in the recesses. When your cotton butt is dirty, try to make some interesting textures on the larger surfaces by poking them or rubbing it with the cotton butt. This will create some cool looking splotches. I shade the armor with Mortarian Grime. This subtle green shade will add even more filth to the original cream looking color. This is a good looking base for a Death Guard Mini. Personally, I'm not a fan of the completely green armor. In my headcanon, the creme armor has been slowly degrading to green, so both colors should be visible to have that effect. I paint all the metal with Iron Warriors. This is a darker shade than Lead Belcher and covers really well. Bronze is base coated with Hashut Copper. I then shade both the metal and bronze with Agrax Earth Shade. This will dirty it up nicely, making the metal look greasy and deepening the bronze color. I highlight both with Canaptic Alloy. This highlight lies nicely in between bronze and metal and can be used for both. I paint the gun casing of the Splurt Gauntlets, and yes, those are the names with Incubi Darkness. This is a small detail I have running throughout my army. I shade with Non Oil. And highlight with Verizian Grey. This is a rough highlight, which I add with a feathering motion to create some texture. The following steps are done with specialized paints, which not everyone has, from a company called Dirty Down. I first use Dirty Down Rust on the metal. I add a very toxic looking Dirty Down Moss on the cram armor. The beauty of these paints is that they reactivate with water. So take a clean damp brush and smear out the paint. This will remove hard edges or even will remove the paint entirely. Very easy to apply, and if you're not happy with the result, you can remove it again. On the bronze, I add Dirty Down Verdigris. This is a dark color, so if you want something brighter, you can use Citadel's Nihilac Oxide. I really like the idea of the toxic green slowly taking over the armor. You can add as much or as little to the armor. And for me, this looks so much cooler on the tabletop than a sea of mute green. Really makes the details pop. The Death Guard has lots of growth everywhere. Some of them I'm base coating with Screamer Pink, and I'm going to build up to a light skin tone. The second layer is Buckman's Glow. Now I usually mention feathering motions, which means I do very small strokes, almost splotching the surface. 
This creates a sketchy looking texture that in my opinion looks a lot cooler than a smooth gradient. I repeat the process with Cadian Flesh Tone, adding lighter and lighter skin tones. Kislev Flesh is next. Here you can really see the highlight coming together. And I end with a highlight of Flayed One Flesh to make it pop. To make the skin look a little bit more sickly, I shade it with Athonian Camo Shade. I really love the sickening look of these fleshy tendrils, going from the Terminator to the Man Reaper. Give some nice contrast to the monochrome armor. For variety, I'm also going to add another recipe for painting skin. First, I base coat with Recarth Flesh. And shade with Targor Raid Shade. I bring back Recarth Flesh to the raised areas. And highlight with Palace Switch Flesh. With a mix of Drakenhof Nightshade and Lamium Medium, I add some blue shading. If you have a steady hand, you can also use this to create some blue veins on the skin. This will look really cool. I also add Berserker Bloodshade on areas like under the eyes, irritated or ripped skin, and fun stuff like that. This recipe can be used on zombies or ghouls or just pale looking Goran tentacles. There are so many applications for this. Because of the monochrome look, I paint the horns in a contrasting color, which is Dark Reaper. I give it a shade with known oil and add two highlights. The first one is a Parisian Grey. And the second is Ulthan Grey. It's good to have some details pop out when a model is largely the same color. The bone exhausts and other bits are painted with Usapti Bone. Shaded with Skeleton Horde. And highlighted with Screaming Skull. It is a lot of work to add so much variety on just one model, I'll admit that. But if you put some time in, I do think it really enhances the model. To bring back a bit of a classic Death Guard look, I will paint all the cloth purple. I will do this with a mix of Shyish Purple and Rattling Grime. Now the Rattling Grime darkens the Shyish Purple a little bit and will make it look a lot less splotchy when applied on larger surfaces. Next, I layer on a mix of model color violet and Kislev flesh. I really went sketchy with this appliance. This was a test, but I personally like the look of this. The second layer is a mix of model color blue violet and Kislev flesh. Then I add a highlight of just Kiss of the Flesh. On the bottom and in the deepest recesses, I add Garagax Sewer to darken the rope and make it look more filthy. Now, this is a bit of a personal tasteling. I really like the sketchy look, but I'm sure this is not everyone's cup of tea. So, you could use the same colors to make a smoother gradient by glazing. But then, with army painting, do you really have time to do glazing? That's up to you. We're almost done here. Let's finish up with some small details. First, I paint all the tubes with a black Templar. And wood with Wildwood Contrast Paint. Maggots are first painted with Ulthan Grey. and shade it with Athonian Camo Shade to make them look icky. 
Eye lenses and fumes I paint white. And then paint them with Tesseract Glow. This is a little bit of a theme going throughout my army, where all the models give off these bright toxic fumes. It is a little bit cartoonish, but it contrasts nicely with the grim dark looking marines, in my opinion. I'm going to gross out the model a little bit more. Boils and pustules are painted with Iandan yellow, and highlighted with palette switch flesh. I add some blood for the blood gut on my brush and dab it on the fleshy bits. I also make some small streaks. Just make sure that you have very little on the brush so it won't overwhelm the paint job. Finally, I add Nurgle's Rat to the model. This is a very effective paint to make stuff look instantly more grosser. Looks great when teamed up with red as well. And here we have the mysterious Death Shroud, ready to teleport onto the battlefield because with a 4 inch movement they are slow as f***. Really cool models though and I have no idea why I didn't buy them when they were first released. But I'm still glad I finally got them. I paired them up with Typhus and also with a Lord of Contagion and they are a very scary unit. In my next video, I'm going to paint some scenery which I mentioned a while ago but never came around to it. And I will also be back with more Death Guard models. In the meantime, be sure to check out my Instagram where I'll post pictures of current projects and behind the scenes stuff. But for now, thanks for watching.